In today's video, we're going to talk about how to prepare for and then export a cut list. So the first thing we should take a look at is in our cab writer settings, just to review one of the tabs here is cut list. And there's a few things that you can uh, set up when setting up your model and, and drawing it in terms of uh, affecting the measurements on the cut list. So the first is oversizing. Uh, the biggest thing is oversizing. The first one is for the carcass. So if you like to cut your parts a little bit oversized for any particular reason um, so that you might have to uh, do some prep to it, say putting uh, edging on um, and so on, that you might want to cut the parts to size uh, after you've initially broken them down uh, you might want to put some oversizing on them. So on each of the parts for the carcass, you can add a little bit of oversizing. So uh, we have a quarter inch on most of it. And uh, we can even add some to the toe kick um, length and width for the applied front that we put on there. Um, door and drawer. So this is uh, important. When I build doors, I build them oversized by a sixteenth all the way around and I make them just a little bit thicker than um, they will be for their final width, uh, thickness so that I can uh, run them through the wide belt sander. So I need to add um, a sixteenth to the thickness so I can take a thirty second off of each face and then uh, the door and drawer panels uh, I add some uh, width and length to because uh, I don't necessarily until I put the door together finally uh, I don't know exactly how big that panel is going to be so when I break it down I don't want to break it down on the final size yet and uh, I add an extra eighth of an inch to the to the style width um, a sixteenth because I um, I use an outboard fence on my shaper and I, I leave extra width for um, the shaper to take off and do a full cut. So there's a sixteenth for that. And then there's a sixteenth because I build the door a little bit oversized. And then I have to add some to the length of the styles to match that so that the door ends up a sixteenth oversized all the way around, an eighth total. And uh, here's where I add a little bit for the, sh uh, the shaper allowance. So I add the eighth of an inch um, to build it oversized and then I add an additional sixteenth all the way around. Um, if you're using a shaper to do what I do. And same with the end panel, I can oversize the thickness and the panel width and length and the face frame, I can oversize the thickness. These measurements, as you'll see, will come out on the, the cut list as well as the final uh, size measurements. So we never draw anything in the drawing with those oversized thicknesses and widths. They're drawn to their final size. But on the cut list, we'll have a separate column for oversized um, thickness, width, and length so that we uh, can cut to that first if we want and then still have our, our uh, final measurements on the cut list as well. <clears throat> so here we have a drawing that's we'll consider it finished. We haven't you know, added all the good bells and whistles and appliances and countertops and everything. But all the cabinets are there that we want. And uh, if we pick a part here, just any old part, and look at the extended entity info window. You'll see that uh, this belongs to cabinet 12. It's an upper door uh, and it belongs to upper door number two. And it's rough lumber and it's maple. And we resize the thickness by a 16th like we just looked at and resize the width and the length by an eighth because it's a door part. So that'll all go on to the cut list. One thing we don't have is component number or part number. And to do that, we usually wait until the model's pretty much uh, the way we like it to be. And then we come up here and we say to Cab Writer, uh, under the File menu, we go to Cab Writer, and we say, renumber all cabinets. All right. So it's finished. Now if we look at that same part under the extended in <clears throat> entity info window, we notice that it now has a part number. 
So it's cabinet two, part number 19. Oops. Sketchup just quit on me there. So, <clears throat> sorry about that. So uh, let's see if it saved that for us. Uh, look at the extended entity info window. And no, uh, our part numbers didn't stay, so I'm going to renumber our cabinets again. So if I go under uh, File, Cab Writer, renumber all cabinets. Now, <clears throat> if I close the extended entity window and you have to reopen it again, you'll see that now this is C2 part 19. So cabinet 2 part 19. So you can always tell by looking at a part number which cabinet it belongs to. And So if I go to the file menu, cab writer, renumber all cabinets. That will assign part numbers to all of the cabinets in the kitchen. So once it finishes, I'll choose our part again, <clears throat> open the extended entity info window, and you'll see that the uh, part number is has been assigned now. So it's cabinet two, Part 19. So, oh, I should, uh, if we look at another part, we can, we can see, uh, if we look at the extended entity info window, this is cabinet C6, and so on. So each cabinet's going to have its unique number for the full cabinet, uh, but then all the parts uh, in the cabinet will have a dash uh, number after it. And notice that also corresponds to the subassembly that it belongs to. All right, so we're ready to export the cut list. <clears throat> so what I often do is create a scene in SketchUp that corresponds to the cut list. So <clears throat> I want to turn off the walls because I don't need the walls. I don't need the floor. If I had appliances and countertops and so on, I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't include those either. So now I can go and open my scenes. So this is all standard SketchUp stuff. And I can create a new scene. For some reason on the Mac, sometimes it turns all your, your layers back off again. Um, we'll just turn them on. So this scene I'm going to call Cut List. And I'm going to turn everything back on that I want, which is pretty much everything except for the floor and the walls. Oops, I need the boxes also. There we go. All right, so don't forget when you've turned something back on to update your scene. So now, no matter what I've got on or off here, whenever I hit this cut list scene, I'll just get cut list. Now I can select all. So if I go to edit, select all. That's everything that I want to export to the cut list. I can go to cab writer. And now we're going to Cutlass Bridge. So you've noticed whenever you install CabWriter, you're also installing a Cutlass Bridge plugin. That's what takes care of taking all the parts that CabWriter creates um, and exporting them to a Cutlass. So we can export to, we'll cover DXF in another video. So we got two choices. We can export to Cutlass Plus FX, which is an awesome program that uh, I'll show you that uh, allows you to manipulate cut lists and do plywood layouts and optimization and so on. Or we can simply export to Excel or OpenOffice or any other spreadsheet that accepts uh, comma-separated uh, value files. So let me show you first the Cutlist Plus. So it's saying uh, a Cutlist file has been written to um, the same folder where my project is and it's uh, labeled the same name with .cwx which is a native Cutlass Plus file. So this means you don't have to do anything except for open up Cutlass Plus, 
and it'll show it to you. I'm also going to export it as an Excel file so that we can take a look at both. So now if I go to my disk here, I will see the .csv is, you know, a comma separated value file is a, is a very standard file that most spreadsheets can read. And the CWX is the Cutlass Plus. So I'm going to drag this down to Cutlass Plus. This is a PC file. Um, I'm running it on my Mac uh, under emulation uh, using a uh, program called Parallels. So anybody using a Mac can still use this if, if they want. And now I drag um, this file down to Cutlass Plus, and it opens up. So you can see uh, all the different columns here. We've got our part number that we talked about earlier, the subassembly, the description of what it is, how many copies of it or, or quantity of those uh, parts, thickness, width, and length. This is the oversized thickness, width, and length. If you go over here, this column is the final thickness, final width, and final length. And this is uh, a legacy uh, bit of information here in the info box. This tells you that the width uh, is oversized, but since there's nothing that says anything about the length like you have here in this column, we assume that length is not oversized. And we should be able to see that if we look here, the width is uh, 33 and 11 sixteenths. Over here in the final, it's seven six, uh, 33 and 7 sixteenths. The final length is the same as the, uh, as the oversized length. So those two haven't changed and the thickness is the same. Tells you the material name and so on and so forth. What's really nice is, you know, there's lots of features for this program and you can, if you, if you purchase it, you can go on to their website and see uh, all the different features. But one thing uh, that I use a lot uh, when I'm not cutting parts on the CNC is the layouts. So once you set up your materials, you can have it lay out all your sheets. So here's all my sheets of three quarter inch pre-finished material. And I can get a, a diagram. It'll print labels for me. So once I cut them out, I can uh, label them and know exactly which part I have. So awesome program. Well worth looking into. Not very expensive at all. If I go back, um, I get the same information. If I look at my .csv file and I bring it into Excel, or any other spreadsheet. And uh, hold on, let me do that again. There we go. Same exact information, uh, but if you don't have Cutlass Plus, um, you can certainly use a spreadsheet and sort it any which way you want. Uh, you get the same information. You also get um, decimal values if you if you choose to use that, and this other information corresponds to uh, some of the optional features that that Cutlass Plus can can have uh, shown in there. So if you uh, look up the uh, Cutlass Plus documentation, it'll tell you what these these columns are for. So that's it. That's how you export Cutlass um, from Tab Writer. Thank you.